Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. It's your girl, Suzette Speaks, live here for Jamaicans.com. I want to say good and pleasant morning to each and every one. Thank you to my peeps from around the world who are watching. We are coming to you from very sunny and very hot South Florida. Big up Miami, big up Fort Lauderdale, big up Palm Beach and beyond. You know I love to bring you interesting topics as well as interesting people, and today is no exception. First and foremost, we are chilling, actually kind of heated up. I don't know if chill is the right word. Yeah. But we are chilling here in Plantation, Florida. If you guys ever come to South Florida, you know where the shops at the fountains are. So hence the fountain. Oh. <laughs> so we are here. We just decided to find some beautiful scenery to give you guys to let you know how lovely it is for the people who are freezing still all around the world. Sorry that you can't be here, but we are giving you our warmth and our love. So, I'm here talking to this gorgeous woman. She is a Haitian American who has a very compelling story about infertility. So, a lot of you might have friends, family, people who have dealt with, dealt with infertility, but I find, especially among women of color, we don't talk about it. Everybody just expect that you're gonna have a baby when you wanna have a baby. Everybody expect when you're married, you just get pregnant, easy, easy, and it's not so. There's a lot of women struggling with this very quietly, and we wanted to really kind of blow the cover off of this taboo subject. So, without further ado, here today to talk to me about her personal journey and what she's doing now to help other women is none other than founder of Feeling Empty Wombs, also known as Few. Big up, Miss Sandra Elidor. Thank you. Yay, yay, yay. Wow. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for having me. Listen, Thank I, you. I don't know. It's a lot of women whispering about mm -hmm. infertility and what's going on with what's in the food and what's in the water uh -huh. and how come so and so ain't have no baby yet and they've been married 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, we're in your business this morning. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things that go on in a woman's body that people don't understand. So I'm glad we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. It's hot, Thank baby. You. We, it is. We might get a little um a, a, little, a little sweat bead. Hello. It's, it's okay. But we're gonna count it all joy. Thank yeah. you. God. So no, uh, <laughs> I don't mind sweating for this topic. Hello. I don't it's, mind sweating. It's that for this important. Topic. So we want you guys to chime in. Please always comment, like, and share. Just just say hello. We're not gonna bite and we wanna know what you think about infertility and your story. If you know people that have dealt with this and how they've dealt with this. So anyway, Sandra, one, one. Thank you. Or should I say, sac passe. Hey, all my Haitians <laughs> out there watching, all my Caribbean people, big up yourself, drop a comment and share. All right, Miss Sandra, so tell us about yourself. Well, thank you for that wonderful introduction, by the way. My name is Sandra Elador and I am a Haitian descent. And being in the Caribbean, this is more of a taboo than being an African-American. Boy, people don't like to talk about call. where babies come from. And then when the babies don't c come, they don't want to say how and why and, why and then they curse this one and why should you do that and this this to cause that. Yeah. There's so much going on and misinformation. So we don't want to clear that up today, all right? Clear. So good morning to my peoples, Jamaicans.com. Let me know you're here. All right, so Sandra, tell me about how you got involved with uh, infertility mm -hmm. and um, being interested in this subject. Well, it's crazy when God have a birth story for you in the midst of your issues, mm. in the midst of your problem, mm. in the midst of your hurts and your pain. Yes. There's always a blessing at the end. Even when we're in it, we may not necessarily see it. Nobody don't like the we struggle. We don't like the struggle. Nobody don't like we the don't struggle. Like but it. there's a story. There's Amen. Always, we just and have to be enough yeah. to wait for it. And this was birthed because of my own issues. I had endometriosis. I was the one that struggled when I had my period, my menstrual in pain and doctors would tell me it's all in my head you're normal you're overdoing it you're over exaggerating but throughout the, those years of having this issue and i was an early bloomer okay nine years old i had my menstrual i had, a, I had an early period too oh, so nine for, for especially i know a lot of women of color some of us not mm -hmm. everybody do um especially in america i don't know if it's the food the water y'all y'all drop a comment but we tend to um, mature and enter uh, puberty faster. Mm -hmm. And that's not everybody, that's not across the board, but I would say on average, especially to our um, our Caucasian counterparts and sisters, we tend to enter puberty quicker. Yes. So for you, it was before the age of 10, also for me. So what, what, did, what did that have as far as uh, impact on your life, you think? Did you think that it grew you up quicker or how did you feel? I know, I, I remember I was in fourth grade and I was like, I was oh my God. Grade. Yeah, yeah, oh, it was so crazy. Right. My parents were like, what? What? To see in period? What? It was like a shocker. Seriously. And, yeah. I, and I think it kind of threw me in a whole different category that I didn't even understand at the I, time. The thing of 
bothered us that being in, um, in Haitian, it was not, we didn't have a conversation. My parents at that time thought they had the time, they had plenty of time to have that conversation. Wow. We didn't have it. So wow. when I had my menstrual, I was like, oh my God, what is this? What's going on? Shock. Why am I bleeding? Shock. Shock. Why is it not stopping? Shock. I thought I was in trouble. I yes. did something wrong. Right, right, right. But when I finally told them, um, I did something. I don't know what it did. I'm, I'm bleeding. And I had a totally different reaction. Don't like, even know what's happening to your body. You're like, what? I didn't what's even know. <laughs> so these conversations, we have to learn to speak about it very early. Right. And if your child is experiencing pain, or right. even yourself experiencing pain through yes. having your menstrual, yes. I don't care what any doctor says. Right. It is not normal. Okay, so I want people to really drop a comment when you talk about endometriosis. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you know what it is so that we make sure we're all defining our terms. What is endometriosis? Endometriosis is basically when you have your menstrual, your it goes through your um, your uterus. Yeah, your uterus? Your uterus. Uh -huh. So it's just to fall a certain way. Yeah. But with endometriosis, it tends to go elsewhere. All over your body. All over your body. Sometimes I don't diagnose with that, but sometimes I think it's I have that too. <laughs> because these little sneaky cells, I wouldn't call them sneaky, they give life. But the endometrium, what is it, the, the uterine wall uh -huh. cells, the blood cells that are shed every month, they don't stay in the uterus. No. They go elsewhere. elsewhere. And all of a sudden, we got a problem, and, mm -hmm. and they're wreaking havoc. I know a lot of times it, uh, women experience it in their digestive tract, mm -hmm. all over their, their body. I saw, I, in their bowel, mm -hmm. and people have told me that they had endometriosis um, uh, affect their hearing. Mm -hmm. Like the cells were actually in different parts of your body. So it's a real thing. Yes. So now, if you're in pain, don't let nobody tell you you're not. Don't let nobody tell you you're not. You're, you're, you're normal. It's you not. can get it checked out. Now, let, I'm gonna ask you this because um, we're just getting to know each other. So a lot of what she's gonna tell me, I don't know either. So one of my friend girls um, has a friend, friend of a friend, who um, had endometriosis and got tested for it. Now, did you allow them to put something through your belly button and test you to tell you they had it? Yes, that's the only way to get the official diagnosis. diagnosis. Okay, okay. That's the only way. Now, I'm gonna follow up with that because my friend, who is the lady's friend, felt that that testing procedure may have caused complications that led to um, uh, impacting your ability to get pregnant, as in, you going through your belly button to test for endometriosis creates scar, scar tissue mm -hmm. and does that affect the uterus long term and does it necessarily have an impact now on your pregnancy rate and we felt like she did hers like three or four times she doesn't wasn't a one-time tester and we're like yo my girl you let the people use you for guinea pig stop going inside your belly you know you have a problem with endometriosis stop getting tested and now she has had very hard difficulty getting pregnant mm -hmm. now do you believe there's a correlation i don't know but we in our little scientific wannabe selves we're like yo that, that messes up your if you interfere with it mm -hmm. doesn't have an impact what are your thoughts my thought is i did mine twice mm. and there was a reason why i did mine the second time yeah and the more you have any surgery mm -hmm. multiple times there's something that's left Yes. There's a scar tissue. Absolutely. And it gets hardened and, and it thickens over time. And that's never a good thing for right. anybody. Surgery period. Yeah, yeah. Period. If you can avoid it. If yeah. you could avoid it, definitely avoid it. Yeah. But my second time having it was more so because the first time, it was really bad, y'all. It was really, I had stage four endometriosis, which is the highest stage that you can get. What does that mean? What are those symptoms like? Stage, the thing about the, the stages, it's a little weird because the higher the stage doesn't necessarily mean how much pain you're in. Oh. Because you can have pain level one, stage yes, one, yes. but you're in extremely pain. Because yes. what happened with endometriosis, it may fall on top of an, um, a nerve. Okay. And that's what the pain, pain comes from. Wow. Yeah. So wow. you may have that one time and you just experience some pain. Right. And once they go in, you barely have endometriosis. Right. Because right, they right. hit a nerve. Okay. Okay. So. so do you feel like, and we're going to get into what you experience in your infertility fertility because you have children so we got the infertility fertility <laughs> journey how was the endometrial uh diagnosis impacting do you think your ability to get pregnant for me it wasn't an impact it wasn't an issue for me because yeah. it was the endometriosis itself okay that was causing my issue right because i had it for so long and undiagnosed okay so pain Doctors, around your period pain all over your body doing you ovulation on. okay doing sexual intercourse wow, it should wow. not be painful but wow. if it is you may want to check that out for endometriosis yes. okay. yeah so and i think are, a lot more black people have it they do yeah that mm -hmm. we tend to they get do. endometriosis undiagnosed mm -hmm. and living with pain during cramp period i know yep. people who can't even get out their bed their period is killing them 
literally yep. and they doubled over they don't want surgery they don't want this they don't, don't want to take medicine and i'm like you can't even stand up and they're not faking it and that's another whole story about doctors not believing not women believing. of color in terms of their level of pain but that's yeah. a whole different off show yeah so back to endometrial pain for you so was there a way that you treated it after my surgery because with the surgery one of my main cause of pain was i have this thing called chocolate cyst. chocolate cyst? chocolate cyst. and the reason why they call it chocolate because over time the my menstrual was collected mm -hmm. into a ball okay so when they actually drain it i don't think this is to cut it because yeah, that would yeah. be a, a mess yeah when they drain it it looks like chocolate so persons like a, a medical professional has to remove that they have to remove it. okay wow because it is a cyst and it'll keep growing over time wow so mine was sitting on my uterus mm. and on my bladder outside i mean of your not uterus? my bladder. no like on inside? my ovaries i'm sorry okay, on my okay. ovaries and on my bowel wow so and i was in pain not realizing what was going on right but no one believed me Doctors did not believe me. So how long did you have that in your body before somebody was like, yo, let's really believe her and check this out? Yes. It's until I, they was giving me a medication. Like if most, the thing about it with, um, infertility, most people don't realize they have infertility until they're ready to have children. Wow. That, and by then, sometimes it's a little too late. Mm. So that was my case. I, my husband and I was trying for a year and it wasn't going through. And mm. because of my age, they give you a year. Okay, okay. At that time. So above 30? Above, at that time I was under, under um, 35. Under 35. It's usually a year. Okay. After 35, they usually give you six months. Wow. Three months or six months, depending on the issue. Okay. So we waited for a year. And so after that, now we started getting fertility treatment, I mean medication. Okay. Not treatment, but So medication. you had to consciously decide, yo, it's been a year and no baby. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to seek medical help to see if we can get one. Yeah. So you go to a fertility clinic. But at that time, yeah. Now you have to go to the fertility clinic to get it. But yeah. at that time, my OBGYN they give okay, me. Okay, so OB at the time was able to do it. But yeah. now they might make money, so now you have to go to fertility clinic. Yes. Too. So you go to the fertility <laughs> clinic and they tell you what? They told me, okay, take this medication. It was a specific medication called Clomid. Mm. And that medication helped you, your ov ovulation. Okay. Basically, Helps allow you, you to ovulate, yeah. ovulate a little bit, like multiple yeah, eggs yeah. at multiple one time. Multiple eggs, eggs, eggs. Yes. So yeah. if it works, there's a possibility you have multiple. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But so that's why case. when people go for a chili clinic, they end up with 10 babies. <laughs> Mine. Octomom. Because Octomom is real. Five and six and ten. Yes. My uncle says it's, it's more like puppy litter. Yes. Be pure baby, baby. <laughs> so it's because they ovulate and they produce more eggs because of this medicine. Oh, yes. okay. Was it yes. painful? Well, it's not supposed to. Yeah. But in my case, it was. Wow. Because of the endometriosis. endometriosis. Oh, so you got double trouble. I had Every double turn. trouble. Every time. I had double trouble. Wow. So you go and, and so you start taking this drug that helps you ovulate. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? So once I was telling the doctor, I was like, okay, I'm in pain. It's like, you're not supposed to have pain, but I'm in pain. Yeah. So they had multiple ultrasounds to realize that, okay, do I do have a cyst. Because now and that's when you that out. cyst was visible. Oh, wow. So we went to have surgery, right, right. and it was like not only you had the cyst, right. but my right tube was like shriveled, like the paper you shriveled. Ooh. They had to remove it wow. because it was shriveled up. And if I, by any chance, end up having a topic, a topic pregnancy yeah, because yeah. of that sort of removal, yeah. wow. so I had one left. Wow. So you find out all this trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. If you can relate, drop a comment. If you know ladies and gentlemen, because it's a it's a family affair, really. Yes, it is. Um, you got did it pressure your marriage in this oh, time? Yes. Were you were you stressed with your husband? It was. It was mm. very stressful. And I think over time with yeah. my husband, I'm now starting to hear more yeah. of how he felt. Oh, okay. Because at that time, the right. men has a pressure of making sure my wife is okay. Yeah. Like they're protected. That's right. what they were created for. Right. That I gotta make sure my wife is okay. Right. Even if I'm in pain, I gotta check out my pain, check right. it out, right. and make sure my wife is okay. Yeah. She's doing so you want to save, you want to fix the problem, you want to yeah. make sure she's good, and he can't fix it. He can't fix it. Wow. He, it's out of his control. Right, right. So he makes sure I was okay, but at that time, our communication wasn't that great. Yeah. Because I pissed at God. I was yeah. mad at Mada, God. Mad. Why? Why me? Why, Why me? me? Yeah, yeah. And my husband don't know what to do. 
So there's nothing you can say that's going to make it better. Right. So our communication was a little rocky. Yeah. But you survived it. We survived. So then, okay, good. So communication is key. Yes. And you don't know what's going on in your man's mind. Even though everybody's okay going to the fertility clinic, yeah. there's a lot of stress involved. Okay, yeah. get a little sweat going. Okay, I praise am, the Lord. So okay. we're going we're gonna to go to the, 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 the hopeful victory. So how do you find out you're pregnant? So, so the fertility work. Fertility we did fertility. Work. We did mm -hmm. for, by the grace of God. When I finally got out of my, why God, I'm pissed, why me, I'm not a woman enough. I'm created to do this, but yes. I'm unable to do what I was wow, created to do. Wow, right. So it was a lot of self-check right. that I had to go through. Right. And once I got out of that, right. I attended, um, my church had a conference. Oh, yeah? And we had prayer and fasting. There's a lot of blessing that come with prayer and fasting. Oh, well. Oh, well. There's so you had to go to prayer. the source. I had to go to the source. Like that, I was still kind of mad. <laughs> I was kind of mad. So let's get some closure. Yes. <laughs> so once I went through all of that, and after that month, yeah. Um, the conference ended this January 31st. Yeah. After that month, I said, okay, God, I'm done. Yeah. I'm, I literally, at that point, I let it go. Right. And right. my testimony, I literally say it, was, it is finished. Right. Wow. I'm done. So that you were not going to be a mom. I'm, I'm not, you were not like, even, I'm not going to be a mom. I'm tired of trying to be Okay. A mom. So it's finished. I'm, I'm letting this I'm go. I'm letting it go. Oh, okay. Okay. So if it happened, it happened. Right. If it doesn't, you know what? Whatever. Right, right, right. Whatever. Wow, wow. So, if you can relate, drop a comment. So mm -hmm. what happens? What happens? So now, yeah. and even at that time, my husband was like, should we do IVF? I'm like, no, I don't want to do IVF. Right. Who wants to do IVF? I don't right. want to do that. Right. So in vitro fertilization. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So taking out your egg, that. taking his sperm, putting Put it, it together, together, and then putting it back Put it in back you. Back in. Yes. Okay, okay. So I don't want to go through that because my big thing was, if I tell God, right. when after I have this child, God, this child is giving me problem. My right. issue was like, God is going to tell me, I did not send you to have this baby. <laughs> I didn't give my, you that baby. You gave I, yourself yes. that baby. Whoa. <laughs> that was my thing. Whoa. I was like, I'm not doing that yet. Whoa, yeah. So, but yeah. through seeking counsel through my pastor, yeah. I believe in seeking counsel through your elders. Right. Seeking counsel. Right. And they have their own personal struggle. With, um, the pastor used IVF? Okay. They didn't, but they they wanted to take that route, but I, it ended, ended up ended having it. it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. But that was like a connection for me. Okay. For so that someone else had this problem. Believer in God, love Jesus, and still could have a baby. Yes. It happens. Yes. Okay. So then, how would you get your victory? Now we decided to go to IVF. Mind you, I, one try. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any frozen left. He right. was the only one that survived. Wow. And by the grace of God, he went. He Woo. took, yes. and I gave birth to a healthy. Boy. He wow. was premature, but he was healthy nonetheless. Wonderful. But the crazy thing about it, remember I yeah. told you right. on January 31st, I said, I'm done. Yeah. Well, my son was supposed to be born April 16th. Yeah. He was 29 weeks um early, which is extremely early. He was born a year later, January 31st. <laughs> Look, I'm done. It is finished. One year, 365. You know, I believe in those not coincidences. God be trying to tell you stuff like, you yep. got to listen for it. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that no matter what, it wasn't that you were a believer or you had a certain type of faith that it can happen to you. It can't happen to you. It can. Yeah. And you have to uh, accept the, the, the circumstance and the struggle. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you felt released from pastor that you did not have to uh, uh, be, be very, um, you know, judgmental about, I don't have a baby this way, I have a baby that way. And we have a lot of people that judge people because some have it natural. Oh, you're an adopted mom. You don't have to worry. It doesn't matter. It's my, it's my ba baby. Mm -hmm. Get out of my womb. Yes. And that's our next topic about women and how you're pregnant and all, when you're going to have babies and all of this stuff. Stop it. It's a I'm lot of taboo. So I really want to drop, you guys drop comments. We're going to continue on the Suzette Speaks page. Catch me on the other side. And I want to thank Miss Sandra Elador for part thank one. You. Thank of you. the infertility talk on jamaicans.com love on thank you for watching see you guys soon